Penta unit at Colchester General Hospital has reopened this afternoon after an electrical fault meant it had been closed to new admissions since Tuesday. The fault caused damage to incubators and syringe drivers in the special care baby unit. About 15 expectant mothers have had to go to other hospitals including Ipswich and Clacton. Now then, if you were watching the programme last night, you'll have seen the remarkable pictures of an escaped rear being tranquilised and captured by the RSPCA. Yes, the bird, which is similar to an ostrich, had been on the loose since December and was recaptured at Ike near Woodbridge in Suffolk yesterday. But today, the sad news that the bird died just a few hours after it was captured. Well, we're joined now by our reporter Lorna Ramsey. Uh, Lorna, I suppose this raises some serious questions for the RSPCA now. Yes, indeed. It's a very sad end to this story and particularly sad for people living in the Suffolk countryside who have seen this rear running around since December. It's been spotted in the villages of Ike, Campsey Ash, Milesford and Wickham Market. And yesterday it was finally caught in the village of Ike. And here's a reminder of my colleague Victoria Webb's report from yesterday. The aim was to tranquilise the rear, making it easier to catch. But it wasn't that easy. And when it wants to run... It's extremely fast. He wants to go through that gate. After a few failed attempts, having lured the rear to the lane, Mark had a better shot. Well, that's the moment that the rear was tranquilised. It was then taken to a farm at Eye, which has other rears. But at 7 o'clock last night, we don't know how it happened, but the rear died. Well, joining me now is Chief Inspector Mark Thompson from the RSPCA, who tranquilised the bird. Mark, what went wrong? I don't know whether anything actually went wrong. I just think it's been a very, very sad case that the animal has died now, and I believe it will probably be something stress-related. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the way the animal was tranquilised. It was the right dose for the animal. I've been doing the job for 23 years tranquilising animals, and this is the first time I've ever had an animal die, and obviously that affects me as well. And why couldn't it be left in the countryside? It, we gave it a lot of consideration whether it would be left there or not, and we'd been down monitoring it, and it, we'd made the decision on some local knowledge and local people telling us that it was starting to go on the railway, it was coming up onto the highway in Ike and going on the roads, and the last thing we wanted, not only to cause the bird any injury or distress by being hit by a motor vehicle, but even worse than that, tragically, if it'd gone through a car window or caused a, a fatal accident, and we can't do that. Mark, thank you very much. Well, a post-mortem examination won't take place, so we'll never be exactly sure how the bird died. But one thing we are sure of is that this is a result that nobody wanted. Lorna, thank you. What a sad story. Yeah. Now we've got more news and the weather forecast still to come. Police are investigating the theft of a number of snakes from a pet shop in Wisbeach. Yes, 12 were stolen from a shop that specialises in reptiles. Only one is regarded as poisonous, but the owner is concerned they'll die without proper care. Malcolm Robertson has the report. There's a real sense of fascination about this place. Some find what's on show here interesting, some slightly scary. But whatever your view, the collection at this shop in Wisbeach, which specialises in reptiles, seemed to have a captive audience today. But over the weekend, there was a serious incident. Either Friday night or Saturday morning, somebody got into the shop, through the back, through a window, into the breeding room, and stole 12 snakes. Only one was poisonous, though not deadly, but potentially, that was a very dangerous thing to do. Especially if those responsible had little or no knowledge of the types of snake kept in the shop. The majority of snakes stolen were the Royal Python, like this. It's worth about 70 pounds, all told, the haul had a retail value of around £1,500. Well, I'm hoping and praying for them to come back fairly soon. If, if anyone has got them, I'd just let them return. To, it, it's more about getting the animal back than anything else, uh, just to make sure they're safe and well cared for. He's concerned that without proper care, they'll die. Cambridge police are investigating and want to hear from anyone who knows where the snakes might be. Since the incident, the shop has stepped up its security in the hope that staff and the various types of reptile housed here can all feel a bit safer. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Wisbeach. 
Now, supporters of Joe Glenton, the soldier from Norwich who was jailed for going absent without leave, have ended their five-day protest march. The former Lance Corporal is serving a nine-month sentence in a military prison in Colchester after refusing to serve a second tour of Afghanistan. His supporters started their walk at the MOD in London and are ending it with a protest outside of the prison where he's currently being held. Police in Essex are warning schoolgirls to be vigilant after a teenager was accosted on her way back home from school. The 14-year-old was walking home from Westcliff High School for Girls on Monday when a man grabbed her wrist. She did manage to fight him off. Police are now appealing for witnesses. The Norfolk and Suffolk broads are the subject of a new campaign to brand the area as Britain's magical waterland. The Broads Tourism Forum and the Broads Authority are hoping to create a new image for the waterways, which are one of the region's biggest tourist attractions, and a haven for some of the UK's rarest birds and wildlife as well. It is truly magical, this sense of being on Hickling Broad as the sun goes down, uh, watching the, the waterfowl just take the last of the big sky as the sun goes down, and that real sense of this is magical. Well, for something that's magical to something that really is not, a couple who were shipwrecked in the middle of the Atlantic are now battling to stay in this country. Yes, Victor and Barbara Stacey lost everything in a storm two years ago. They've since set up home in Burnham on Crouch in Essex, but now the UK border agency says that Barbara, who was born in Trinidad, must go back and apply for a visa. Lorna Ramsey reports. For Victor and Barbara Stacey, this boat in Burnham on Crouch is home. Times have been hard since they were shipwrecked two years ago. And ever since they were rescued, they've been locked in a constant battle with immigration officials. We were shipwrecked. We lost everything that we had, all our personal belongings. And, and this is even a, a much bigger fight because it's very, very unnerving. You know, I, don't, I can't sleep properly because I'm, you know, waiting to hear if someone will come and knock on the boat. In March 2008, Victor and Barbara set sail from Grand Cayman and were heading to England for a new life. But 700 miles from the islands of the Azores, in the middle of the Atlantic, disaster struck. They were caught up in a storm and were plucked out of the sea by the crew of a freight ship heading to Humberside. It wasn't only our boat. We uh, had our entire home on board, everything we owned, right to the last button. Uh, uh, and we did escape that with just literally the clothes we were standing up in. And uh, we're really having to start off from scratch. In a statement, the UK border agency told us Mrs Stacey was granted a visitor's visa in September last year and has overstayed. The rules are absolutely clear that a visitor must leave the UK within six months but may reapply for a new visa from their country of origin. Barbara and Victor fear the only option left is to sail back to Trinidad and apply from there. But considering what they've been through, they're hoping they won't have to do that. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Burnham on Crouch. One of Bury St Edmunds' most historic buildings is set to be turned into a pub. The Corn Exchange is almost 150 years old and is a Grade 2 listed building, but the council agreed it could change its use. The pub chain Weatherspoons is now expected to apply for planning permission to turn it into a bar. It's not turning it into a Weatherspoons. It's actually, I hope, providing something, again, different to the vibrant offer we have. Weatherspoons will have to address the concerns that people will quite rightly have and the council have. They will have to get planning permission um, before they open here and hopefully those concerns will be addressed. And the 147th Royal Norfolk show is coming to its conclusion just about now. The organisers believe that around 100,000 people enjoyed the warm temperatures over the two days and next year numbers could be even higher still with all of Norfolk's state school pupils being given the Thursday the show off.